Descartes uh, demonstrated his method for combining uh, geometry and algebra in 1637 as an appendix to his discourse. Uh, the introduction to that discourse is uh, probably more important than the geometry and certainly a lot easier to read. Now I want to take a look at Descartes' multiplication. And I remember that he, his multiplication results in linear lengths, whereas Euclid's had resulted in uh, numbers of square units. And he has to prove their equivalent. And now here is Descartes' original uh, drawing uh, converted over towards a modern coordinate system. The equation and the proportion have to be equivalent in some way. And he also wants to show that his system is an improvement. Okay, here's a slightly larger version for clarity with a grid underlying it. I'm thinking of the uh, grid intersections as rational numbers and the BAs, BDs, BCs, etc. as real number lines. I'll have to go get some more uh, badges at Con before I can tell you if I'm right on that. These are similar triangles and a Euclidean proportion applies. BD is to BA as BE is to BC. Uh, next, uh, Descartes arbitrarily assigns a unity value to BA. It then cross multiplies and treats the statement as an equation instead of a proportion where BD times BC equals BE. Euclid's multiplication resulted in a rectangular area and using the grid reference you get a 20 by 15 rectangle with the greatest common denominator square being a 5 by 5 square. You reapportion those and you get a 3 10 by 10 square units equal to 3 linear units. Hey, here's an application to uh, rational numbers. And here the uh, whole number approach is uh, spelled out in a little bit more detail. And here it is noted that Descartes introduced ratios as quotients and proportions as equations. Galileo published his dialogue on two new sciences at about the same time using variations on Euclidean proportion theory. And here, Paolo Palmieri indicates some limitations of that mathematical system uh, as applied to physical quantities. According to Ivor Grattan Guinness, uh, the modern equations in which terms on one side equal different terms on the other, uh, as introduced by Descartes, are only possible with some idea comparable to the continuous real number line. Uh, Descartes addressed dynamics and motion with this mesoleb or proportional compass. In modern coordinate systems, uh, yx becomes the y-axis and yz becomes the x-axis. This is how it worked. And again, here on opening, these are the names of the curves which need to be related to the axes. When closed, both axes merge to the horizontal and all the rulers converge to intersect at A, which I understand to be the positive root for the equations. Uh, this is from the Smith and Latham translation. Curve AB is part of a circle and so not expressed, but the equations for the higher order curves are shown in modern algebraic symbols, many first devised here by Descartes. On the next page, here is Descartes' statement of the fundamental concept of analytic geometry to the effect that all points on these curves must have a definite relation to all points of a straight line expressed by means of a single equation. He avoided the infinite, negative numbers, etc., anything that might complicate the issue. He was introducing a new idea to a very hostile environment. I'm sure every math teacher knows the feeling. As a likely source of Descartes' ideas, he had written a Compendium Musica for Be uh, Beekman in 1618, and uh, shortly thereafter, he drew his first uh, version of the uh, compass, and he wrote to Beekman that he had found a completely new science. Apparently, this was not worked out for some time, according to Boss. Here's my own version of using the Mesoleb to uh, derive the fret spacing and frequency ratios. However, uh, these would be the uh, units along the x and y axis in a coordinate system, not the curves. The Stefan Agalkarager of pages 97 to 98 can clarify a bit more on the relationship between the curves and the uh, continuous proportions.